aside from the fact that we just saw an incredible thing happen, lithium-ion phosphate batteries are now more expensive in China than NCM chemistry batteries. This has never happened in the history of the global battery market. What does that say about demand for LFP cells from educated automakers and consumers in China who have a lot of choice? Well, I think it leads us to an obvious conclusion here. However, what's even more interesting than this is the staggering reduction in EV battery pack prices this year, 30%. However, battery pack prices as a result have now come down 80% over the past 10 years. This year, electric vehicle batteries have come down in price by a staggering number. It's absolutely not what anyone predicted, except for a few people, including my own mental self. I've been criticized for making these wild claims that EV battery prices will continue to come down, and well, they have, but even more than what I thought they would. Remember, the key component, the key cost to an EV, and the reason they still, aside from small EVs, cost more to manufacture than gasoline, diesel-powered vehicles, is the battery pack. Well, if the battery pack price just fell basically off a cliff, what does this mean? Reneweconomy.com.au says that the price of battery cells has plunged in the last month, taking it below a key benchmark for the first time in two years and close to the tipping point where the price of battery-powered EVs can match that of internal combustion engine cars. Now, it's worth pointing out the tipping point is completely different depending on the size of the car. And the reason being, it's not really much more expensive to make an engine for a bigger car than what it is for a smaller car. Not a whole lot of difference involved there. You still need pretty much all the same parts. However, for an EV, that's completely different. If you want to drive an EV the same distance, you need a significantly bigger battery pack. That costs a lot more money. So the first cars to hit price parity, it's believed it's already happened in China, are small electric cars. This will happen next for small to medium, then medium, etc. According to leading analyst Benchmark Lithium, the global weighted average price of lithium iron battery cells fell by 8.7% in August, taking it below the US $100 per kilowatt hour mark for the first time since August 2021. But if you include the value of inflation, that actually means battery pack prices are by far and away cheaper than they've ever been before. Keep in mind, battery prices actually fell by 10% in the month of July alone as well. And so far this year, they're down by approximately 30%. Pack prices now cost $98 per kilowatt hour, a 33% drop from their high in March last year of $146 per kilowatt hour. And this is the result of a drop in key commodity prices, including lithium, nickel, and cobalt. But it's not actually just that. There's a lot more going on here. Production has increased worldwide by 70% this year. You make more batteries, make them at a much larger scale, you can make them more efficiently, you can actually make them at a lower price and still make a massive profit. And we now know the profits being made are astronomical. CATL, the world's biggest battery company, is now the most valuable company in China. Who would have thought that would happen? I mean, that's a bit of a, a scary fact when you've got the Chinese government critiquing CATL for having a perceived monopoly. Put BYD and CATL together, and you're looking around 55 to 60% of global battery manufacturing coming from just two companies. Anyway, what does this all mean? Well, batteries are now very close to the mythical 80 US dollars per kilowatt hour cell price that Renew Economy says is crucial to delivering a US $100 per kilowatt hour battery pack. In fact, some analysts believe we're already there. This is a level considered a tipping point because it will allow EV factories to build electric cars that cost the same as petrol and diesel alternatives. I personally believe Tesla is already there. And the reason I believe that is because, well, for one, the majority of the cars that they build now worldwide use LFP cells. The majority of those cells come from one manufacturer, CATL. And of course, for CATL to maintain that relationship, they need to offer Tesla good pricing. It's their biggest customer by a mile. And of course, it's very important for CATL's brand that they can tell other companies, hey, look, we supply Tesla. We're, big, we're Tesla's biggest supplier. This actually works. It works for BYD. 
They did the same thing. They blabbed on and on about how they were putting their new batteries, the Blade battery in the Model Y, which they are. It's a good battery pack. But what happened as a result? Toyota uses their batteries now. So does Mercedes, uh, Mahindra. There's, they've gotten a bunch of new, new contracts as a result of that. Importantly, the energy and transport revolution continues, said Gerard Reed, a leading energy analyst and head of Alexa Capital. Reed said the price of lithium battery cells has fallen 80% in a decade and will continue to fall as they deliver better performance. That is why the death of the internal combustion engine is very near, said Reed on LinkedIn. You've got a combination of things happening here. Not only are the batteries significantly cheaper, 80% over 10 years, the energy density over that period of time has nearly doubled. Nearly doubled. Now, some energy density of some packs hasn't nearly doubled. It's increased by 50%, 40%, but many of them have doubled. This is why the death of the internal combustion engine is near. It is also good news for stationary battery modules used to soak up solar and provide storage in electricity grids dominated by renewables and follows on from news that solar module prices have plunged to record lows, approximately 30% cheaper panels this year, reversing the price gains experienced in the last two years as a result of COVID and the war in Ukraine and as a result of increased demand. Essentially, the three biggest panel suppliers in the world ramp production up because there's all this massive demand increase. Of course, then we have more of a stabilizing effect. And not only that happened, but the actual materials used to make solar panels, the average benchmark prices came down by about 50%. So you can see why panels are so much cheaper this year. Benchmark Lithium says prices for most raw materials used to sell manufacturing have fallen enormously. Lithium, in fact, has fallen by around 50% over the past 12 months. For electric vehicles to reach price parity with internal combustion engine vehicles, battery pack prices need to reach $100 per kilowatt hour at the pack level, not the cell level, not accounting for subsidies. This corresponds to a cell price of $80 US per kilowatt hour. And this kind of really gives us an idea of how Tesla can still make a profit, even though it's selling Model 3s at a very, a very largely discounted price. It's been selling them very, very cheap price in China. It's been discounting them, you know, many places. In the US, of course, Tesla pays more than this amount for its batteries because it buys them predominantly from Panasonic or it makes them themselves. It's nowhere near hitting these battery price figures. But the majority of Tesla's batteries are coming from CATL and BYD. And that gives them a tremendous cost advantage over many of its rivals. Decreasing cell prices, though, will allow a range of car manufacturers to sell mass market EVs at comparable prices to gasoline vehicles with the same margins, improving the attractiveness of the EV transition for both consumers and automakers. But this doesn't really apply if you are making those batteries yourself. I mean, have you seen LG Chem, LG Energy Solutions? Have you seen them saying, hey guys, our battery pack prices are down 30% this year. Woohoo, General Motors are getting cheap batteries from us. No, you haven't. All you've seen is within the last 24 hours, General Motors saying, uh, we're shutting down EV production of our GM bright drop vans. There's a lot of demand for those, by the way. We're shutting down production for, I think, is it four or five months because they don't have enough batteries to make them. And the truth is here that companies using LFP cells or using Chinese made cells are taking advantage of this companies that don't use those cells won't benefit as much. They'll still be getting reduced prices, but not as heavily reduced. So this means that the falling prices of battery metals and graphite at the same time, a key component in battery manufacture, have followed through into falling cathode and anode prices. Benchmark says its cathode and anode indices have fallen 42% and 17.6% so far this year. In other words, the cathode, a major cost in the battery pack, has come down by 42%. That's astronomical. On top of this, lithium prices have more than halved since the start of 2023, with Benchmark's lithium carbonate price index dropping 52% since the start of this year, and the lithium hydroxide price index dropping even more than that, a staggering 58%. That's the price of the refined lithium needed to actually be used in an EV. Cobalt sulfate prices are also at their lowest level in the Chinese market. 
Nickel prices have also dropped 25%. And prices of everything have come down. And that includes inflation. So if you actually include the value of inflation, you can actually get a really good idea of what's going on here. Prices have dropped even more than what I've just said. But what's even more interesting than all of this news, and in fact, is staggering to me. This is a complete shock. I don't think anyone expected this. NCM, nickel, cobalt, manganese, 811 cells have dropped in price even more than LFP batteries. They're now at a price at the cell level of 82 US dollars per kilowatt hour. That gives us the figure we need to hit price parity for smaller EVs. Lower than the price of LFP cells, which on average are at $85 per kilowatt hour. This has never happened before. This is the first time in history that we've seen NCM cells be cheaper, if only by a little bit, than LFP cells. So right now, we're basically at that point needed to reach a US $100 per kilowatt hour pack price. And as a result, the Chinese market will continue to grow. EV sales will grow there very quickly because now maybe it's possible for a lot of these Chinese EV manufacturers to make a profit. In the past, it was almost impossible for them. They're just basically treading water. They may not have to tread water over the coming 12 months. And this will mean they can actually continue to ramp up production, continue to offer their EVs at extremely low prices, and then sell those everywhere in the world, which is what they plan to do. So what does all of this mean for you as a consumer? Well, it means that um, whatever price you pay for an EV this year, it'll be pretty good, depending on what country you live in, but it'll be even better next year, but better the year after that, even better the year after that, even better the year after that, and when will that end? It may not end for at least 10 or so years. It does mean one big thing though. Countries like Japan and Germany are in big trouble. They don't focus on making EVs, they don't make batteries really on mass at all in any significant level. And they're not prepared for this disruption. They're about to be disrupted. Thank you for watching.